imagine my little girl sitting here right now, mm -hmm. I'd be going crazy. You're trying to look like a freaking cartoon character, which is not real. Okay. If you continue down this path, you're going to ruin yourself. What's up, YouTube Poor Man Podcast? Back with another video. Give me the HBO special. That's a help brother out special. Hit the like and the subscribe button for more content. Let's get right to the video. Women should not go to prison for false accusations. And do you want to know why? Because out of all the in this world, they only have a 16% chance of actually facing charges. So I'll advocate for women going to prison when we actually catch all. I hate when people try to virtue signal with this topic. I, I personally know guys that have done attempted murders. I personally know guys that have done armed robberies. I know grown adult men who think that Dragon Ball Z is a better anime than Naruto. These are all sick people. They're not mentally well. The elevator doesn't go all the way up to the top floor. Nobody's home. And even they understand that rape is bad. You're not Buddha. You're not Gandhi for saying that rape is bad. We all understand that. I'm a grown man talking to mostly other grown adults and I still have to give a full disclaimer anytime before I talk about the topic. So let me go ahead and give my disclaimer. The R word is bad, but we will not and should not ever believe all women. Why? Because just like there's a small minority of men that commit egregious crimes like the R word, there are also a small minority of women that are willing to lie about it in order to gain power. And he literally just gave the statistic. He said that 16% of men that commit the crime get locked up. That means that 84% of men went to trial, went to court, and there wasn't enough evidence to prove that they were guilty, so it got tossed out. Now, that doesn't mean that they didn't do the crime. It just means that there wasn't enough evidence, and that's exactly how our justice system should work. It really doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. If you lie with the intentions of ruining somebody else's life, then you deserve to go to jail. His logic doesn't even make sense because if we believed all women, then we would just lock the men up and there would be no false accusations for women to go to jail for. All right, Miko. So this question says, what do your students call you since you're non-binary? Miko is one of my students. What do you call me, Miko? They, them. That's my pronouns. But what do you call me as your teacher? Teacher Roby. So you know my pronouns are they, them. You know that you go by or I go by teacher Roby. What are your pronouns? But do you know math? She, her. Very good. And is um, how do you feel about calling me teacher Roby and how do you feel about my pronouns being they, them? I feel good about your pronouns, and I think you should accept yourself and don't listen to the disrespect. You should definitely accept yourself. Absolutely. I love that for you. And um, when when sometimes if a student um, messes up my pronouns and says she, her, or calls me Miss Roby, what do I say? You say she or they. Right. And then I also will remind you to call me what? Teacher Roby. And that's it. Do I ever get upset at you? No. Do I ever make you upset or feel unsafe? No. Do you feel safe? Yes. Very good. All right, say bye. Bye. <laughs> so instead of teaching math, science, how to do your taxes, any financial literacy, they're, they're slang and propaganda. I mean, the kids, they're, they're learning what pronouns are before they know what a regular noun is. What could possibly go wrong? So while I finish getting dressed for school, I want us to have a chat about not being okay. Oh, so she's a teacher to too. Earrings. I'm going Great. with the aliens. Okay, earrings are on. Let's chat. I want to talk about this idea of dressing safely because in that video that I posted when my body dysmorphia was really taking over and I'm still struggling with it is that I wear clothes that make me feel safe and that means that I don't have to worry about what I'm wearing because it hides parts of me because sometimes it is okay to hide. I think there's a misconception that like when you start to like love yourself or like put yourself out there that hiding is like like reverting back to old habits but it's not it's keeping your mind safe and your body safe by doing things that make you feel at ease like wearing all black or a loose t-shirt and that's okay there's, there's nothing wrong with that and it doesn't invalidate your mental health She's literally breathing heavy from just standing and she's talking about body dysmorphia. This is what body dysmorphia means according to the Mayo Clinic. Body dysmorphic disorder is a mental health disorder in which you cannot stop thinking about one or more perceived defects or flaws in your appearance. A flaw that appears minor or can't be seen by others, but you may feel so embarrassed, ashamed, and anxious that you may avoid many social situations. Key words are minor or can't be seen by others. That ain't what you got. Craziest part about this is people are literally faking mental illness to get social clout. I remember when to be seen as special, you had to have a talent. Now to be seen as special, all you gotta do is self-diagnose yourself with some mental illness. And the craziest part about this is those people are allowed to teach our children. And I don't know, but I just think that if you let mentally ill people teach the next generation of students, that could be a problem. <laughs> Too, boy. That's, he, that's, that's, he's livestock. He's cattle at 682. That's huge. 
Okay, so okay, go and get it in. He's gonna get it in. Let me read this quick. Nobody's fault but my own that I am where I am today. I am 21 years old. I gained 400 pounds after freshman year of high school, and here I am. All right, let's see what you're doing. Six three six eighty two. Ready to change my life. That's all that matters. Absolutely. Oh man, that's amazing. That's good for him. Wow. Wow. And that's exactly it. The accountability always comes before the results. Literally, if you have a drinking problem and you want to get help for that, the first step is admitting that you're an alcoholic. So sometimes you just got to look in the mirror and get mad. Sometimes you got to be upset at what you see in the mirror. Like you got to look in the mirror and say, I'm tired of seeing a broke man. So I'm going to figure out how to deal with my finances so that I'm not this way next year I look in the mirror. Or I'm tired of being fat. I'm not happy being fat. Fat is not healthy. I don't care what people are telling me. I know I'm breathing heavy when I'm just standing here and I don't want to be like this for the rest of my life. I'm going to make a change. And that decision, realizing that you're in your position because of the decisions you made in the past, means that you can change where you're going to go in the future by making better decisions. And that really realization is super powerful man and i'm re i really take my hat off to this guy because he did such a great job at losing that weight and trust me i gained weight quick just just looking at a cookie i gained two pounds for division one sports sometimes you have to lose weight so i know how hard it is to lose weight but the first step is just being aware if you were my daughter sitting here and i'm kind of acting like that right now because i imagine my little girl sitting here right now mm -hmm. i'd be going crazy you're trying to look like a freaking cartoon character which mm -hmm. is not real Okay? If you continue down this path, you're going to ruin yourself. It could affect your health. That's the most important thing. And you can die from it. You, I'm not going to even examine your nose. If you touch your nose right now, you'll ruin your face. You're too young and beautiful to do that. I'm yeah. talking emotionally from my heart. Now, that's actually closer to body dysmorphia, and this stuff is rampant amongst women, especially with the introduction of social media. This stuff is through the roof. I actually have a theory for why it might be that way, and it's because women compete for male validation. Girls and women compete for male validation, and on social media, male validation means likes and comments. The girls get on social media, and they see the women with the most likes and comments are girls with fake noses, fake boobs, fake butts. They don't understand that sexual attraction and what men actually want to marry are two vastly different things. They just see these Instagram models that get all this male validation. Validation. They get to hang out with rappers, actors, and athletes, and they start to think, oh, that's the life I want to live. And so they go, just a little here, just a little there. Next thing you know, you look like handsome Squidward. I really don't understand why people are obsessed with perfection. Like, literally, you tell a girl she's a nine and she gets mad. She, she, gets, she gets angry. She thinks it's an insult. She goes, why aren't I a 10? It's like, well, I mean, people are average. Just be average. That's fine. Many of the happiest people in this country are average people. I mean, just like average woman meets average man, get together, have average kids in an average house, and they live a happy life. Like this endless chase of perfection, trying to tweak your face and tweak your body instead of fixing the insecurity that's in your head, just leads you to a road of self-destruction that will ultimately probably have you looking worse than you would have if you just aged naturally. Till next time.